In case you miss it, here's a sports animal rewind. Let's talk some Vanderbilt football. We bring in the play-by-play voice of the Vanderbilt Commodores for football, men's basketball, and baseball as well. Joe Fisher joins us here on the new Sentinel Sports page. Hey, Joe, Vince and Mike here in Knoxville. How you doing, Joe? Guys, good to be with you. Uh, always good when Tennessee week rolls around. Yeah, absolutely. But it's not a rivalry, though, so it's not That's as right. intense as it could be. That's right. <laughs> what, 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 what do you make of that? What, what's, what's James Franklin trying to accomplish by downplaying that? You know, I think it's a couple of things. One, and, and he's been very open about this from the beginning. He, one of his, he thinks one of the theories to success is to really, at this point in the program, really try to treat each preparation for each game as the same as possible. Um, that's a lot easier to say than it is to do, obviously. Uh, but that's kind of been his mantra from the beginning. I also get what he means uh, in the concept of, of a rivalry being uh, more of a rivalry if it's not been so one-sided. Um, so I, I think it's that, that's kind of part of his message, too. I, don't, I think it's not any issue of a lack of respect for you know, the in-state uh, you know, meetings and, and the, the history but I think he just feels like Vanderbilt kind of needs to do more of its part to get back up and make this much more of a competitive series. Joe, uh, the, we, we were just talking before you came on the air about the turnovers Vandy's defense is producing, uh, yeah. and, and not just one game. Uh, where, what's the story on that? It, you know, is Where's that coming from? It's funny, Mike. I, I talked to James about that uh, last week, and I said, you know, in the middle of this season, you were complaining, you know, we've got to do something to start forcing – more turnovers, and I said, it's like you flipped a switch all of a sudden, and there it is. And he said, well, if you can tell me where that switch is, I would love to know. Um, I think it's a combination of a couple of things. I think, in, in part, James and Bob Shoup on the defensive side just took the took the reins off a little bit of some of the guys and said, go ahead and be more aggressive on your coverages, run to the ball. You're, you're probably going to make a mistake now and then where you're going to overrun a play or whatever but we're going to get more benefit out of you being more aggressive than being in that tentative sit-back-and-cover mode. Um, I think that's been part of it. Um, and, and two guys have just – individuals have made plays that weren't making them earlier in the year, guys that were either a step late or weren't in position now are getting there. We're getting a lot more pressure from the defensive line. You know, early on, the only way we could get pressure on the quarterback was to blitz in some fashion. Um, and now they've done a much better job – of being able to get some pretty consistent pressure on the quarterback without having to blitz. So you have a better opportunity for coverage and interceptions and the like. Vanderbilt play-by-play voice Joe Fisher joining us here on the new Sentinel Sports page. Vince Ferrara, Mike Strange, and Knoxville. Another thing that is worth pointing out that I don't think people realize is the success that Vanderbilt has had in the month of November. Joe, seven straight wins, as you know, eight and two under James Franklin in November. Why do you think they've had that kind of late season success? Well, I think you you got to be honest. There's a couple of reasons for it. Certainly, uh, I think a big part of it is James and this staff have had a formula and a philosophy where this team gets better as the year goes on. And all teams should get better by repetition and practice and the like. But this team sincerely does get better. I think part of the reason for that is their philosophy that they adopted early on defensively to rotate players consistently throughout the games instead of you know one group taking the predominant order of snaps on the defensive line or whatever – and they rotate guys regardless of the situation. So you have players that take fewer snaps as the year goes on, so they're fresher by the time you get to November. You also have more guys that have more experience in critical situations by the time you get to November. And I think that's why these teams have gotten better. For the most part, they're not as beat up as some teams tend to be this time of year. Uh, And I think that's been a big part of it. Also, let's face it, they've caught some teams that have been on a little bit of a downturn as well, you know, during that time frame. So, you know, you put that combination together, I think that's been the the reason. But a big part of it is uh, James and his staff have a team that tends to get better as the season goes on. Joe, looking at your quarterbacks, uh, Austin Carter Samuels, Pat and Robinette, just kind of uh, illuminate us on, you know, those two guys and, and what to expect Saturday against Tennessee. Well, I think you can expect Austin to start. Uh, I, I would be surprised if he did not. I think what he brings um, to the table 
they like his long ball ability. He can stretch the defense. They feel confident taking shots uh, with him back there. That adds an element um, that, that we haven't had a lot of. So, And you saw even in the game against Kentucky, we took uh, six or seven uh, pretty reasonably deep shots uh, in, in that game. Austin will bring that. So that, that's a problem for the secondary. Um, he, he also is a guy, now we didn't see a lot of it last week, uh, that can run the football and has no problem running that read option. Uh, he didn't do it against Kentucky, I think, trying to maybe protect the knee a little bit. I would be surprised if he didn't look to do it a little bit more uh, this week. You, you guys are probably a little more familiar with Patton, uh, certainly a guy that uh, is a winner. Um, and, and I think uh, certainly earned his bones in, in maybe the best way possible by being thrown into that Georgia game and rallying the team from behind in the second half to win it, and then going down to the swamp and doing it again. Um, I, I think so. He's a guy that they have complete confidence in, um, and, and, I, and so I wouldn't be surprised at all if he played in some situations as well. Uh, probably not as strong an arm as Austin, but makes good decisions. Um, I think maybe he was hit a little bit early uh, by being a little bit tentative and not wanting, wanting to make a mistake. And so as a result, he held the ball a little bit too long, took a couple of sacks that he didn't need to take. I think he's played his way through that now. So I, I think they're very confident with either one of those guys back there. You, you mentioned the read option. How much does Vanderbilt do that? And what about the pace as well? Will How often will Vanderbilt pick up the pace uh, this season in, in typical games uh, on offense? You know, it's interesting, Vince. It's, it's truly a multiple offense in that uh, opposing defenses have to prepare for a lot of different things. They have to prepare for us to, to run with that quarterback the ability to do the read option. We'll run the Wildcat primarily with Jerron Seymour, but Wesley Tate can run it as well in that situation. They've had a lot of success uh, running out of that package. We'll run a jumbo package with seven offensive linemen on the field. Um, we will run uh, out of the shotgun. Uh, they do all those things, and then they you throw in that read option factor as well. So it's quite an offense to have to prepare for. In terms of the pace, uh, I think James and, and John Donovan, our offensive coordinator, are, are really good at kind of sensing the feel of the game. Um, so if they kind of feel like maybe the defense is on its heels a little bit, boy, you'll see them shift into hurry-up mode. Um, we'll go no huddle a lot, but as, as you guys know, there's, there's a difference between no huddle and hurry-up. Uh, but there are there are numerous times that you'll see we'll call two plays in the huddle, and uh, the guys will come up and they'll run a play, and then they'll jump right back up to the line of scrimmage again, and, and often catch a team a little bit ill prepared. So we like an up tempo game. Uh, I, I think our players like an up tempo game, and they feel like now our depth has been an issue uh, the last couple of weeks with the injury situation. We've been a little bit limited in terms of that. In fact, we only dressed four wide receivers. Uh, for a game recently, which is really limits what you can do. So uh, they may be a little more likely to go hurry up more often now that we're getting some, hopefully some of these guys back. Rushing offense, uh, not very good this year. 14th in the SEC, 137 yards a game. What's the story there? No, I, I think part of it is we played some pretty good defenses. Uh, I think you have to, you know, that's some of the credit that goes there. But I would also say that the numbers might be a little bit deceiving because, for example, uh, you go to the game in Gainesville, uh, one of the better rushing defenses uh, in the conference. We rushed for, oh, 130, 140 yards in that game. Florida was giving up about 100 a game. But it was really efficient. It was Jerron Seymour getting three yards when you had to have them. Um, they, they like to pass the football in this offense anyway. A lot of the short passes, a lot of the receiver screens, bubble screens and the like, so it's probably not an offense that's going to rush for 200 and something yards on a regular basis anyway. But I think you would have to say, if you're a Vanderbilt fan that's looked at it, that the run game has actually been pretty good in, in terms of getting the yardage when they needed it and occasionally popping the big run with a Brian Kimbrough or, or, or Seymour being able to do that. So I, obviously you'd like to rush for more yards. You'd like to control the clock and control the possession a little bit more. But I, I think for the most part, even though the numbers may not bear it out, it's been pretty good. Vanderbilt play-by-play -play voice Joe Fisher joining us here on the new Sentinel Sports page as we're learning a little bit about Tennessee's opponent on Saturday at Neyland Stadium. You mentioned the Florida game. That hadn't happened in an awful long time. I think 1945, the last time Vanderbilt yeah, not won. not in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> what did that win mean for the Vanderbilt program? Well, you know, I, I think at first, uh, let me just talk about what it looked like. Okay. Um, because one of the things that struck me as that game was unraveling 
was our approach to that game. There was not a lot of celebration. There was not a lot of you know, dancing around on the sidelines, not a lot of hoopla. It was a very businesslike approach, and what it struck me as was those guys fully expected to win that game. Uh, so they were not surprised by what what many people saw as a historic or an historic you know victory. Um, that sort of told me a lot about where this program has gone to uh, as well. They've done a lot of things that haven't been done around here in a long time, and so they've sort of become accustomed to having that you know moniker put on them. Oh, you're the last team that did that was so and so, or last team to win nine games was almost a hundred years ago. Um, so I think they've sort of they like it, uh, but they don't celebrate it that much. So it's, that was one of the things that struck me when it happened. Now, obviously what it does is it gets another one of those things that you're going to hear every year out of the way. I remember when uh, Kevin Stallings, every year we would go to Rupp Arena, and it was, all, well, when are, you, when are you finally going to win a game in Rupp Arena? You've never won a game in Rupp Arena. And we finally did. And I remember the next year, it was Kevin like, I, the best thing is I don't have to answer that question anymore. That's out of the way. Well, they've got, gotten that question about when are you going to finally win in the swamp out of the way. Joe, I'm going to sneak in a basketball question since yeah. uh, you mentioned Kevin Stallings. You saw the Commodores play last night. I mean, this roster, much more of an overhaul than Kevin would have liked, uh, mm-hmm. attrition for different reasons. How's it uh, How's it looking, and what, what do you think uh, You know, a reasonably best-case scenario is for Vandy basketball this year? You, you know, Mike, I think Vanderbilt fans, when this year began, you know, had – gloom and doom in their in their sights uh, you know when you lose as you said have to overhaul the way you did and for an unexpected uh, series of reasons um it, it's certainly understandable you think you're really going to take your lumps and this team's going to take some of their lumps this year i mean there's there's not a lot of depth on this team there's some inexperience um you've got a freshman in the middle and damian jones who's going to do kind of what he did last night one half where he didn't do anything one half where he was terrific um, so there's going to be some inconsistency. But I think fans have grown to really like this team uh, in, in a short period of time because they like the way they play. They like their effort level. They can score the basketball. Last year's team really had trouble, as you know, scoring. Um, you know, we, we, only, we only broke 80 points last year once, and that was in the first game of the season. Uh, this year's team has already done that you know, on a couple of occasions and almost did it again last night so they're an exciting team to watch they've got some prolific players mcclellan uh showed last night with 29 points at butler uh that that he's a guy that that can play at this level and play in the sec and and so i think they're encouraged in terms of what they'll accomplish you know i don't know it's it's so hard to say and part of it mike too is as you know this is the first year we're going through this schedule in a different way you know we don't go to kentucky this year we don't go to florida this year um which is going to seem very awkward for a lot of ways. So I think a lot of it for some of these teams is going to depend on who do you play twice? You know, who do you only have to play once? Who do you not have to go to their arena to play? So, you know, it's going to be kind of up in the air to see how this thing develops. But I think fans, for the most part, are encouraged that this team is not going to be what they first thought. And then they're doubled in encouragement by seeing the recruiting class that was signed that's coming in next year. Joe, last couple of quick football things with you, and we appreciate your time. Sure. Talk, talk about Jordan Matthews, how Vanderbilt uses him, and and does it depend on the opponent and where they line him up? Well, I think they have shown, uh, Vince, they'll use him in a multitude of ways, and I think that's one of the things I've really been impressed with with Jordan's game uh, is he'll line up anywhere. You'll see him on either side of the field. You'll see him in the slot. You'll see him out wide. Uh, In a three-receiver set, he can be in any of the three-receiver positions. Uh, They showed last week against Kentucky another wrinkle that they're more than willing to give him the ball in the reverse. Uh, And he had a 28-yard run in one of those. Um, So, And the other thing you can't factor in with Jordan, he's not just a guy that's going to run a post route or a streak. He's going to go across the middle. He'll take a receiver screen. You've got to be aware of where he is all the time. And they've done a great job of moving around and making it hard for the defense uh, to close in on him. So, And that the numbers bear out. They, they've been very successful in that. We talked about the turnovers defensively for Vanderbilt. What about getting after the quarterback and maybe that front seven? What stands out about that group? Well, actually, we will probably play, I would say, nine defensive linemen in a regular rotation. Um, so what you see is, and at times, one of the things they've done this year is you will see technically four defensive ends across the front. Uh, when they really want to get after the passer, 
they'll take out those big 300 pounders at nose tackle or defensive tackle and they'll bring in a Caleb Azubuki and put him in a defensive tackle position. So it really puts pressure on that offensive line to catch up with those quicker guys. And then the other thing Bob Shoup will do, he'll dial up blitzes from anywhere. He'll blitz linebackers, he'll blitz corners, he'll blitz safeties. You know, sometimes they'll jailbreak blitz and go after it. So it can be difficult for a quarterback to pick up, especially a young quarterback. But as you guys know, the risk is if you blitz a quarterback like that, like Dobbs, who can run the football on you, if he gets past that first wave, you're in trouble. What about special teams? Commodore's terrific, I think number two in the country, and uh, kick coverage. Talk about special teams. Well, Kerry Spear has been just tremendous. Uh, what a weapon he is to very consistently kick the ball and kick off out of the end zone and, and just take the opportunity for return totally out of play. They're very focused, as I know most teams are, but this staff is very focused not on just kicking the ball, but where you kick it. Uh, placement to a certain side of the field, punts to a certain place. You know, they prefer a punt to land between the numbers and the sideline. Uh, that's an art. That's not that easy to do. Taylor Hudson punting the ball, uh, got off to a great start, hit a period where he struggled a little bit, has been much better the last couple of weeks, so I think they have a lot of confidence in him. As you guys know, for years, one of our real – uh, weaknesses w- was special teams. You never really quite knew what you were going to get. Last couple of years, it's really been a strength. Are you enjoying Twitter? You're a little, little late. Uh, you, you were a little hesitant to do it at first, I guess. But are you enjoying it at all or no? I was I was drag kicking and screaming <laughs> into Twitter, I'll be honest with you, because I, my, my first philosophy to that was I, I risk my career every time I go on the air anyway. Why right. do I want to add another element to <laughs> Good it? Good point. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but nonetheless, it, yeah, it's been fun, and I think fans have, have really uh, enjoyed it. We were able to, as you guys know, give a little bit of a behind-the-scenes look at times, and, and certainly that's good for the fans and, and enjoyable, too. Of course, James Franklin, I think James feels very much the same way I do about Twitter, but it's kind of one of those things that if you're going to do it, you need to go ahead and do it and try to make it a positive, and he does an outstanding job of it. Joe, I want to, I want to squeeze in one last thing. I really appreciate your time. What about the off-the-field distractions with, with that rape case? How, have, how has Vanderbilt handled that, in your opinion? Well, I think as a university, they probably handled it about as well as you can handle something like that. It's, it's, uh, certainly it was a challenge uh, and continues to be because it's one of those things uh, that elements continue to come, come up from time to time. You just don't move on totally away from it. There's always another element that seems to crop up. And I think even the coaches will admit uh, there was a portion early in the season where it was it weighed on the players. It, it was a, a bit of a distraction for them to have to deal with. Maybe even more surprising how much so than the coaches even realized that it could. Um, but I think they've done a pretty good job of dealing with it uh, and, and moving on. You guys know how close teams tend to be. and um, So they, they've handled their troubles about as well as they can. And uh, it was certainly something we're not accustomed to dealing with around here. Hopefully we won't have to deal with again uh, something like that. But uh, I think they've at least gotten that to a point now where uh, they're a little more able to handle it and not be as distracted.